Um, thank you both, you know, very much for those, uh, you know, some, some really great things to think about. And I guess, you know, I'd like to open it up to, uh, to the people on the call if you all have specific questions around what Don and John have raised. Great. So, okay. Rita, go ahead. I, I, I could chat, but I'm on the phone. Um, could you talk a little bit more about the status of the WOW project and for those of us who weren't involved in the genesis of it to give some background and what its, what its goals are, what's happening, and replicability in other communities? I'm, I'm very happy to do that, and John, you are more than welcome to jump in as well. Um, as many of you know, the WOW project was begun as a cooperation between ADCA, the Association of Central Agency Directors, Central Agencies, and JESNA a number of years ago. That was back on the JESNA board at that time to show you how long ago the initial conversations were. Um, and I'll just fast forward to about a year and a half ago. Um, we had done a lot of work together to try to figure out what would lead to change in supplementary education that would stick. Everybody says it's broken. What could we do innovatively to change the environment? Uh, and it was a community-based approach that's learner-centric, as I said. Our prototype city, our community, has been Columbus, Ohio. I obviously spent some time there. We've been working for a little over a year with Leora Isaacs and Steve Krause as the uh, lead people. I came in at the very beginning and uh, uh, worked with the, the rabbis and the, uh, the educators in each of the congregations. Our partner, and I want to make it absolutely clear, it's crucial, our partner for this entire enterprise has been the central agency. Rabbi D. Chakwas is my partner every place I went. She went to the beginning. It's the same with Leora and uh, he's now. And we've gone through for about a year a summit that did things like we first did focus groups, talked about what type of uh, change was necessary. We gathered data to see what was going on in each of the nooks and crannies of the Columbus community, presented that back on a Sunday eight-and-a-half-hour session that was attended by everybody. I mean, it was a who's who in the Columbus community. The head of the federation told us afterwards that in her 13 years in that federation and her couple decades in other federations as a federation CEO, she had never seen that energy and never seen all the rabbis, the educators, the unaffiliated, everybody represented there in a very, uh, uh, an exceptionally energetic day where we looked at what had been, we dreamed about the future, and they are now in the process of saying, what can we do that's different? They're, they're, they're banning about ideas that include things like, um, something of a magnet school concept that is not particular to a partic to a given uh, congregation or to the or only to the JCC or only to some unaffiliated groups or people who want to work in the arts, for instance, would have their kids going to a particular location. That's that's something they're talking about. Another thing that they're talking about is an example of an innovation they might want to go to is I know some of your communities may have retreat centers, but they're taking very seriously the notion of outside a classroom. Uh, let's have a Shabbaton here or there. Let's do a retreat center that goes across the lines that we have in the community and uh, actually have radical programming that gets at, gets kids where they are, gets families where they are. So they're innovating right now. And what has started to happen recently, I don't know if I should give, there are two or three other communities. We're in intense conversation just, for example, with Toronto right now, with Miami and a few others who are, and a few of them represented by many of you on the, some of you on the phone call, who are saying, we've been hearing what's been going on in Columbus. We've been looking at this. We want to try it. And it's not one size fits all. We are going into innovative programs with a number of other communities to try to change the landscape and not just do incremental change, but very substantial change. So it's a long-winded answer, but I'm hopefully being responsive. Any other follow-up questions? John, do you want to add anything? Nope. Nope. Okay, so Marilyn, I think Marilyn had a question. I was interested in the partnership and the programming between the complementary schools and the JCC that you had mentioned was going on in a community. I think sure, that's... very, yeah. I'm Go sorry, ahead. did I interrupt you? Nope. Okay, yeah, Good. apologies. Um, the the, uh, the Kila partnership is something that uh, Frida may want to comment on as well because I know okay. it's, it's in her community. Um, basically, uh, it was uh, an initiative that was uh, undertaken 
um, from the, the JCC, one of the JCCs in uh, the, the Bergen County area, to um, bring a number of synagogues together with the JCC to work collaboratively on, on initially on how to improve the supplementary education. And there were a couple of different dimensions to this. One uh, was to do uh, collaborative teacher training and curriculum development around um, a particular, in this case, they chose the issue of Israel through the arts. Uh, they developed a number of uh, curriculum units. They did uh, training together, and this was all done collaboratively. Uh, a second uh, dimension was the, the concept of using the resources of the JCC, including its cultural arts program, its, 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 its Israel uh, programming, um, its, uh, its camp, uh, day camp, uh, as a, uh, a resource that synagogues could call on. What's happened, interestingly, is that um, out of that has also grown efforts that have nothing to do particularly with Jewish education, but have to do with, for example, uh, joint purchasing of fuel oil uh, as a way of uh, helping everybody uh, save uh, money on, uh, on uh, heating costs. Uh, so it's, it's uh, uh, something, they have a, uh, a website, uh, if you Google Kihila Partnership, you can read a lot more detail about what they've done. They've done uh, some community events, they've done some, as I say, some sort of behind the scenes work uh, involving educators, and it seems to be growing. Uh, more synagogues have joined. I don't know, Frida, how many there are, are, there are now? 11, there are 11 synagogues. This actually was... The initial visionary of this project is the executive director of one of our JC, YJCCs. And um, he actually saw education as just one slice of a broader approach, thinking about the Kila experiment in the, in the 20th century, earlier part of the 20th century, <coughs> really across the board community cooperation. And um, again, <coughs> education is one slice for our, um, for, for our purposes. They did focus consciously on teaching Israel and on bringing Israel closer to our children and to our families. Um, and the age group that they chose, <laughs> well, the, the, re, the age group that they chose was um, children in sixth grade, being that those kids were on the cusp of considering dropping out. So a secondary objective was to try in the long term um, to deal with attrition um, or lack of retention, shall we say, post bar and by mitzvah. And also because we have a number of schools um, whose populations are dwindling. So the program brings kids together about six times a year, usually on a Sunday morning, the same time as religious school with one Saturday night program. Um, and they learn and they, they focus on Israel through the arts. And it's a type of program that, by and large, not one school could do on its own. Um, there has been also a, another focus on using technology, more for the teachers than for the kids themselves. And there's been some staff development of that. And principals have gotten together to work on curriculum to support the um, what, what's happening when, the, when the, the, all these sixth graders get together six, six times a year, um, the academic piece so to speak, and they have artisans who work with the kids teaching Israel through cartooning, through beading, or whatever. Um, and if anyone else is, is interested in, in finding more about it, and there's, you know, there's, there's some tweaks in the program, and, but it's still very exciting that it's cross-denominational, conservative, and reform, and we have a strong principal council learning community in a community of practice, whatever we want to call it, in our community for many years. Um, so it built on that, but has worked actually outside the principal's council at the same time.